Now, of course, uh, we've just passed Christmas, a time for peace and goodwill towards men. We've also just passed New Year, a time to reflect, perhaps, and hope for a better 2021 than 2020. Hardly difficult, you might say. Aside from an end to coronavirus, perhaps top of the list comes uh, wishes for peace. That is certainly the theme of my guest today on Perspective. Steve Kill LA is uh, author of the book Peace in the Age of Chaos. He created the Global Peace Index. He's executive chairman and founder of the Integrated Research and of the Institute for Economics and Peace Contact. Thanks very much for being with us on the programme today. I mean, it sounds like uh, almost something a child would say, perhaps, doesn't it? Um, what do you want for the new year? World peace. Why do you think peace is so important? Well, I think this, it's many faceted. So first up, let's look at the major challenges facing humanity in the 21st century. So there are things like climate change, ever-decreasing biodiversity, maybe full use of the available fresh water on the planet. And so unless we have a world which is basically peaceful, we'll never get the levels of trust, cooperation or inclusiveness necessary to solve these problems. Therefore, I'd say peace is a prerequisite as viable a society as we know it in the 21st century. And I think that's probably different than any other epoch in human history. And do you think we get that wrong in our mentality, the way we think about things? Well, I think we can improve our approaches to peace. If we look at over the long term, uh, peace, certainly the internal peace within countries has been improving for at least the last 500 years. But if we look at the today, a number of the qualities which associate with what creates the resilience for societies to be peaceful is slipping. And so if we look at it, let's say, look at the Western democracies, for example, we find that to fractionalised elites are increasing. That's where the conflict between the elites within a society, you can see that reflected, let's say, in the US last presidential campaign or Brit exit. You're finding uh, he, uh, things like, uh, let's say, uh, uh, perceptions of corruption within society uh, and their perceptions are on the increase. People are becoming more disenfranchised with the uh, democratic political process. That's on the rise. And we can also see in a lot of countries, workers' rights and even wages are eroding, eroding while the uh, wealthy are becoming more wealth in all these things that sort of create underlying tensions within society. And you talk in your book, don't you, about um, why um, or what you need to do to create peace in the first place? Yes, well, we'll look, uh, we developed the Global Peace Index, which is the world's leading measure of global peacefulness. And so we did statistical analysis, used about 25,000 different data sets, indexes, attitudinal surveys to see statistically and then use mathematical modelling to see what's really associated with highly peaceful societies. And that we call positive peace. But I think what was profound in it, what we found also is the same qualities which create peace, create for a higher GDP growth, they create for better measures of well-being and happiness within societies, better performance on ecological measures and better measures of inclusion. So as we look at this framework or positive peace, it gives us a framework for revitalising some of those issues which I mentioned a few minutes ago, which are happening in Western democracies. So what are those qualities then? What do we need to aim for? Well, in a lot of ways, none of this is going to be counterintuitive, but it works as a system, so you need to be focusing on all things simultaneously. So things like, let's say, uh, well-functioning government, a lot of Western democracies, that's slipping, particularly in France. Strong business environment, uh, high levels of human capital, uh, equitable distribution resources, and that doesn't mean equal. It means the social contract, which the majority of society agrees to. Lower levels of corruption, acceptance of the rights of others, and that's another area which we're finding in many ways is getting stretched. Uh, so there's some of the qualities, good relationships with neighbouring countries or in, if it's in Africa and other parts of that, it'd be neighbouring tribes. But these all things function as a system. That's quite a different way of being able to view from society from the way we do it at the moment. And they all interact on each other. So if you can get the system right, it's self-reinforcing. It's a virtuous cycle and it improves. We look back over the Western democracies in the last decade, and globally also, we find things like demonstrations and riots are on the increase. You can see that in France, let's say, the yellow vests. 
In fact, they're up 246% in the last decade. And to sort of correct these times, type of things, we need to get back to the basis of what made our societies work. And Steve, and it sounds, I was going to say, it sounds listening to you there, Steve, that um, you spend a lot of time in offices. That's not at all the case, is it? Because I, I know you've um, spent, uh, spent time, for example, in Africa recently. Well, not since the start of COVID-19, but I've been travelling into Africa regularly for the last 30 years. I have a, a family foundation, which I got from the money I got out of business. And so at any one point, we've got 30 uh, projects going, but we work in the poorest countries in the world, and a lot of them are conflict, uh, yeah, conflict countries. And sort of that's really how I got my interest in peace, uh, yeah, because uh, yeah, yeah, some of the situations on the ground there at times are horrific. And just finally, um, I mean, the other thing you talk about in the book is how this all relates as well to sustainability, to how we can continue to grow and, and go on in the future without um, damaging, you already mentioned, cli the climate, for example. Yeah, well, the climate's just one. There's a whole range of ecological shocks. Europe is probably in pretty good shape. Africa's in dire straits, as is many parts of the Middle East. And so what we find is the same qualities which create for a vibrant and peaceful society also create the concept, adaptability, your concepts for adaptability within a society as well. So when a society gets hit by a shock, it's the ability of the system to react to that shock gives the ability to absorb it. Now, also, what happens if you've got the right structures, the society then adapts so that future shocks are much better prepared for. And so as we're looking at this positive peace framework, that's why we say it's a transformational framework for change. And it's something which we think is really needed in the 21st century. We need a reset. Steve, great note to end on. Um, nice and optimistic. Steve Killer Ke Lay joining us there from uh, Sydney, Thanks. Australia. Thanks very much, uh, author of uh, the book Peace in the Age of Chaos and uh, also uh, the uh, inventor, if you like, the creator of the Global Peace Index. Thanks very much.